we received a mandate from the people to lead the country to success, founded on a principle which we articulated in the progressive agenda. That was the power principle, participation, accountability, and responsibility. When we were engaged in the process of the progressive agenda, we were often asked why it was taking so long. And I think it is important for people to understand that this was not just an outcome-based exercise, but the process of engagement of the widest cross-section of party cadres and the Jamaican public is a fundamental distinction between how the People's National Party operates and the other party, other major party in Jamaica. As such, we have organized a report so that when you review this, you will be able not only to link our work for the year to our promises made in the manifesto and the progressive agenda, but begin to see the linkages between the efforts of the different ministries and the direction that we are taking to move the country to success. Our work is anchored in five planks or pillars, if you wish. The first one is creating the social safety net to help ease the burden of the most vulnerable Jamaicans, while at the same time re-establishing economic stability. Both are very closely linked, as it is impossible to have economic stability if citizens are unable to survive. So in this section, we speak to the safety nets we have begun to and will continue to put in place and the steps we have taken to allow for fiscal responsibility while still preserving space to grow. It is in this section that the majority of matters that will need to be addressed to allow for the successful completion of the IMF agreement are dealt with. The same critical matters that we have to get right as a country. Whether a deal was being negotiated or not, this is the, these are among the short-term actions we have to take. The second plank speaks to repositioning the economy to create a clear path to growth and development. This is a critical plan, and of course, it will be one of the main focus areas of our cabinet retreat. Speaks to positioning the economy for growth. In our manifesto, we highlighted four industries, ICT, manufacturing, agriculture, and tourism. The first year was spent in laying the foundation. An important element of that is our efforts to establish Jamaica as a major logistics hub in the Americas. This will facilitate not only transshipment, but also ICT and manufacturing companies to set up operations in Jamaica. The general focus in all areas has been on setting up the regulatory environment and the institutional capacity to stimulate growth. We have established a 1888 red tape hotline to assist persons in business as they interact with our various agencies. Much work has also been done on the key enablers of energy um, and foreign policy. I want to move to the third plan. And of course, remember the details are going to be, are in this document you'll be getting. So I'm not going to go through the, the, the minutia of, of what is in the document. The third plan is about creating a framework that facilitates genuine participation for better governance. We won the election based on our slogan and our recognition of people power, putting people at the center of all our development efforts is critical. We think the success of any government is going to be based on genuine participation of the people. As I said earlier, this is not just an activity 
designed for its PR effect or to facilitate an outcome. This is a fundamental distinction of how the People's National Party as an institution um, comes to its decisions and engages people. Local government has been playing an important role in this area together with the Ministry of Information. The Ministry of Justice also has a critical role in this area. Um, it's often said there can be no peace without justice and we have seen instances where if people feel that they're not getting justice from the system, they will attempt to create their own. It is also here that our system of governance and constitution is being addressed to ensure that we have, that we facilitate Jamaicans having a fundamental say in how Jamaica is governed. I want to turn to the fourth plan. No growth can take place without people. For an individual or individuals to contribute to the growth of their country, they must be educated, they must feel safe, they must be healthy, and they must have a strong sense of identity. It is in this section that we address the needs of our children and our youth. We have begun to make Jamaica a safer place. Crime is moving in the right direction, it's being reduced. And perhaps, if I could focus just on a sub-area of that, the issue of violence against our children. We made dramatic headway during the course of last year. And perhaps I'm surprised, um, but not really, but disappointed that the media hasn't taken up the fact that during the course of the year, apart from the 16% reduction in sexual assaults against minors. The trend during the course of the year, we moved from 108 incidents reported in the month of January on a steady downward trend that by the time we were in December, we had only 18 incidents reported. That is a dramatic reduction, and yet we haven't seen much of that spoken about in the media. And the final plank or area that we want to that we speak to in a report card is our physical infrastructure development. This again is a critical cornerstone to support our growth plan. With limited resources, we have to be very focused and prioritize carefully. The projects of expansion of our ports and the North-South Highway um, which again links in with the logistics hub are both very significant and particularly the fact that the North-South Highway is being funded entirely by, pri by private funds. The taxpayers of Jamaica will not have to come up with a dollar for this US $610 million project. And in fact, the $120 million US dollars that had already been spent by the government will be recovered over the life of the concession agreement. Similarly, we deal with the areas of shelter and water and the critical area of the land administration and management program land, where we continue to support the importance of giving people their title to unlock the equity that they have in their home. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we create economic stability while providing a cushion for the most vulnerable in a spirit of genuine participation and with an empowered population, we will work together to create growth in a healthy and safe environment. 